Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. In this video, we are going to go through different types of brushes available for watercolors. For every watercolorist, I have to come up with their own personal library, but I will save you some heartache and I don't want you guys to go through the exact same thing what I went through when I started with watercolors. I'll show you the different types of brushes and the applications and how to use it. And what I'm going to show is my own personal library, but after watching this video, you'll be comfortable and you can come up with your own personal library based on your style of painting. Before jumping onto it, hit the subscribe button so you can get weekly updates on our channel. And thank you so much for your support and uh, let's get started. Now let's jump onto the round brushes and uh, I have different kind of round brushes here. I started with uh, these two brushes here. It's called Princeton Neptune 2 and 16. And these brushes are really uh, useful for uh, painting gradients as well as for uh, water reflections. And the only thing I don't, uh, I don't like about this brush is it doesn't give uh, hard edges, but it's really nice to paint and it gives smoother surface. I really loved it because of that. So the next brush I bought, the round brush I bought was um, this brush. This brush I bought in uh, Flipkart. It's called uh, Art Essentials Oyster Synthetic. This is made in Sri Lanka, but it is available in Flipkart. I bought this brush because I thought that it will have, it will give a hard edges for me, but it didn't. But I really love this brush for another reasons because it holds a lot of water as well as it holds a lot of paint. So I can paint for a long time without dipping into my uh, palette or dipping into my water. So the next favorite brushes are these. So these brushes are really light, so it's not heavy at all. So I can paint uh, really easy with this. And these brushes are you, you can use it for anything. So I use usually use it for um, water reflections to paint buildings and uh, because this also when I dip into the water it gives really beautiful uh, hard edges. Even if you paint trees, it will give a lot of broken edges. So that's the main reason I bought these brushes. These are called Brustro brushes and you can buy these brushes in uh, Flipkart too. And this is like quite cheaper as well. Let's look into some of the round brushes. The first brush we're going to look at is Princeton Neptune brush. It is really good for painting skies as well as for gradients. It does give a decent amount of art edges, but it is really useful for blending colors. As you can see, when I add a warm color to my cobalt blue, it gives a smoother transition from the cobalt blue to the warm color, or the purple. Here's the tip. Collecting bead is really important because when we add another color to the bead, it gives a beautiful gradient. Now let's jump on to Brewster brushes. Brewster brushes is really useful for creating variety of edges and textures. Most commonly, we can use it for trees and foliages. It is one of my favorite brush since it gives a laser sharp edges while painting details. In market, this brush also called a squill brushes, so don't get confused about it. And you can see uh, I'm painting the trees without dipping into my palette or my watercolor because it holds a lot of water as well as paint. And this brush is also used for glazing. I tend to do a lot of glazing in my work, as you can see. When I glaze from the mid-ground to the foreground to unify my painting, you can see it gives a beautiful gradient from the mid-ground to the foreground. So let's look into uh, mop brush or quill brushes. So when I started, a lot of people say uh, there's mop brush, there's quill brush. I think I don't see any difference, but I call it mop brush. So this is when I started with, this is called uh, Princeton Neptune uh, number six. So this brush helps me to create a lot of uh, water surfaces and it also helps to create beautiful uh, gradients too. The one good thing about this brush is it holds a lot of water, a lot of paint, and it also gives quite a good uh, hard edges too. And you can see the, the bristle is like super soft so you can, uh, you can like create like beautiful transitions in watercolor. So I want to go bigger than this, so I bought this brush, which is from Art Essentials, uh, Kaz and Squirrel. And this I bought from Flipkart. And I was thinking that I want, when I want to do bigger paintings, I want to do something really big. So I bought this uh, brush. So the purpose of this brush is the same as this, but the only drawback in this brush is it doesn't give hard edges, 
but the only good thing about this brushes is it holds a lot of paint and a uh, lot of uh, water in it and uh, let's see how it can be used now let's jump on to mop our quill brushes I personally use this brush for creating bigger paintings water reflections and gradients since it holds a lot of water and paint it also gives super nice gradient and smoother transition as you can see we are collecting the bead and adding colors and increasing the pigment consistency to get a nicer gradient from top to bottom as i mentioned it also gives super hard and sharp edges so it helps me to go around the docks and foliages the same application can be used in any kind of paintings you do using this mop brush. Okay, let's jump on to uh, my favorite brushes in my personal library. Brushes called Escoda Perla series. And this is the synthetic brush and uh, these brushes are used to create really sharp edges like I'm talking about razor sharp edges. And you can also use it to paint as well. So it does uh, both the purpose. And I, every painting I do I usually go for one of these brushes for sure. And uh, I have different uh, sizes for it. This is the 10, the 12, and this is the 8. And I also invested on this brush because this is called Perla Z Escoda. And this is called, um, this is used for like you go out traveling and anything, you can use this brush. And uh, the good thing about these brushes are it also gives beautiful gradient. It, it can also be used for painting as well. And it also gives like a laser sharp edge when you dip in the water. But the one thing to keep in mind is, as I said, bigger the shape, bigger the brush, smaller the shape, smaller the brush. So I don't have uh, bigger brushes here, but whenever I go out and paint, so I make sure that I paint like smaller paintings so I can use, uh, use these paintings. And let's see how it can be used now. I always get excited for using this brush. For some reason, it gives uh, quick and confident strokes. You can also paint regular shapes with it. As you can see, we are adding darker tones for the trees with variety of shapes and edges. And it does hold quite a lot of paint. If you use less water, it can be used for creating darker tones as well as for mid values. And you can see I am taking it from the right to left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to a smaller brush now since we are going to paint the smaller shapes. As I mentioned before, it also give super sharp thin lines. And you can see I'm also able to do the sharper lines and details for the docks. And there's also two rods which connected to the docks. So I'm also adding it. You can see I can literally uh, make thin lines as we can do in a ballpoint pen. Now let's have some fun with this Perla brushes. So now uh, we can add some details for the canoe. And we can also add some shadows which is sitting on the docks, so which creates and anchors the canoe on the docks. And let's take some uh, mid values and darker tones and we can add some shadows, partial shadows, which is peeking through in the docks from the canoe. And uh, let's call this done and uh, we'll move on to the next brush. So these are uh, flat brushes. The main purpose of flat brush is to, uh, to paint buildings as well as you can also use it for create gradients. I've seen most of the watercolorists uh, used to uh, paint uh, buildings and to create gradients as well. But as a personal preference for me, I usually use it to paint buildings or larger paintings because that's why I have uh, different kind, uh, different sizes of my flat brushes. As a beginner, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these flat brushes. This is a cheaper uh, brushes I bought from Michaels, so you can start with this. And uh, I'll also show you how to use this uh, and its purpose um, in a painting. Don't freak out. I flipped my watercolor paper. And now I'm going to use the uh, flat brush. And I'm happy with the foreground. And I want to flatten the background and push them far away to create a foggy mood. I'll use the water and the flat brush. And I rub off the painting slowly till I'm happy with the result. So I'm going to just use water. And rubbing it off from the background. I'm not going over the mid-ground because I just want to push the background far away from the foreground. And whenever I use this brush, I also use the sprayer with the combination. So it also creates a glow effect and light comes through our background. So now I'm rubbing it off, the extra paint and the extra water. And let's flip the canvas and boom, we push the background.
to the last set of brushes I have so I call this misc brushes because uh, I have two brushes here so these brushes are called rigger so the, the purpose of the rigger brush is to create uh, really sharp lines for example you can paint uh, light post wires and any kind of things that involves lines and it also gives like really thin lines because the bristle looks a little bit uh, separated here once I put water and once you have pigment it gets like super thin so that's the point of using this brush and I would suggest um, each manufacturer have their own rigger brush but this brush I found it it's really light and it's uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, bristles in it so the next brush is called pinstripes and this pinstripe brush this is really used to uh, have a lot of loose edges when you paint trees personally I don't use this brush but I'm just showing you that you know there's such a uh, brush exists like do some research on this this also gives like a lot of beautiful edges and uh, creates a lot of beautiful uh, textures too so look into it and uh, let's see how it can be used in our painting let's see how we can put the rigor brush to practice I want to create the grass little frictions on the water it's also super thin in my reference so I want to get the thin details in my water reflection on the grass the only way we can achieve this is using a rigor brush. Being said that, the rigor brush looks different depends upon the manufacturer. Some brush have thicker and thinner bristles. So pick one which works for you and based on your painting. You can also use the side of the rigor brush to create some broken edges and textures as you can see, which gives an impression of uh, grass and fo foliages. Rigger brush also helps so helpful uh, to create wires, light posts, trees, and directional lines. Sometimes I also use this brush to add highlight to get a uh, different uh, type of edges. So whenever I create highlights, I usually take a white paint. So for the canoe at the top, I want to create the thin eyelet, so I'm using a rigger brush to achieve that. And I also want to lighten up some of the darker areas, so I'm just using a white paint to you know, bring back some eyelets in my uh, docks. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. Hope this video helped you to learn types of brushes available for watercolors. And let me know what's your personal favorite brush from what I showed today and tell me in the comments. And if you have any requests or subjects you want me to cover in watercolors, let me know in the comments as well or write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com and thank you again for watching this video please hit that subscribe button so you can get weekly updates from our channel and good luck with your painting folks